Hey folks, well this morning I'm putting up some of the uh, common rafters on the honey hut and uh, as you can see up there, let me see, can I make it go up? Nope. Okay, I'm having difficulty, <laughs> technical difficulties here on the homestead. So uh, what I thought I'd do is just go over uh, a couple of terms and, uh, and explain what these common rafters, uh, how I'm cutting them and uh, preparing them for the building. Uh, so I'm going to turn the camera on for a second. Okay, the first thing you'll notice about this structure, uh, the honey hut here, it looks like it's just one half of a building. It just looks like the left side of a building. You'd expect up here at the peak that there'd be a mirror image, rafters going down the other side. And if there were rafters going down the other side, we could have trusses as opposed to the rafters. However, uh, since this is a, a pole barn type structure, so it's made out of six by six pressure treated posts that go in the ground. Uh, the posts on this side are 12 footers, so it makes it uh, just over uh, eight foot tall on this side. And the posts on this side are 16 footers. And if you look at, uh, there's a top plate uh, going above the posts on each side. You may be able to see it over there a little bit better. And uh, the building is just under 12 foot wide. Uh, it gives me just enough room to do the work we need to do inside of the honey hut, working with the bees and storing their materials and gathering data as well. So the thing I wanted to just quickly review is how I'm actually making these rafters. If you notice, there's a top plate here and a top plate here. So there has to be two bird mouths. A bird mouth is the, that area that's cut into, let's see, I'm not sure if this is showing up, but it looks like oh, a mouth that grabs onto that top plate right there. So it fits in there nice and secure. So we, we engineer that based on the pitch of the roof. So this roof, unlike all my other roofs, is only a 412 pitch. I just wanted to decrease the overall footprint of this and it's strong enough that it will handle the snow load. Uh, and there won't be any ice breaks on it. So I'm gonna let the snow just shoot right off the, the roof. So, with the uh, 412 pitch, we can go ahead and, and, and use our speed square and make our, our uh, markings on these 2x8s up here for the bird's mouth. This part that over here is called the overhang. This is called the soffit cut right here. Uh, and the fascia mounts on to this end here. Now I'm going to turn the camera around and hopefully it's going to show up a little bit better. So here's a board. This is the end that we're just looking at. This will be the fascia cut and that's at 90 degrees. Uh, to, well this is actually represents uh, the plumb line. So this will be level. This is the soffit cut going below it and we'll go up and this is one of the bird mouths that's cut out to fit on top of the top plate. So that way it would be straight down. We come down further on the, there's a 16 foot two by eight. Here's a second bird's mouth. The thing is when we're cutting these bird mouths in, we want to make sure that we have adequate uh, structural support above uh, this bird's mouth, this cutout that will, will encapsulate that, that top frame. And then this is our, basically our plumb line, which is our ridge cut. So here's one here, this is the pattern that I use. So once I made my initial cut, uh, made my initial fit, this is the pattern. So here's our, where the ridge board would go if we were making a two-sided building, or it's just gonna be where fascia is gonna go on this one. My top, this is the upper, uh, the highest point as far as the top plate goes. That's where this bird's mouth fits fits over that plate. Now I'm just going to turn the camera around and show you again. Hopefully that's visible. That spot right above my finger. Then we go down further down the rafter. 
Here's the lower bird's mouth. It's a little bit smaller. And here is the soffit cut. And here is the, uh, the fascia plate. So there's only a tiny bit of waste using these 16 footers. Would I have liked to have had, so this overhang at the uh, base of the structure is two feet. Would I, would I have liked to have a two foot up overhang up here? Yes. However, uh, I just didn't want to spend, uh, you know, spend more money on 18 or 20 footers to, to accomplish that. All right, I'm gonna get ready to mark this one and to cut this one. Here's my pattern or my template. So the first thing I'm gonna do before I mark this one is look down the length of it and see is there a crown in, in this rafter. There is just slightly a little bit of bow. When I say crown, if you take a straight line from this corner to that corner, this protrudes just a slight bit up this way. We always want the crown to face up. You never want to have a belly in your rafter. You'd rather have it crowned up as the weight comes down on it, it, it will somewhat neutralize that crown, bring it out to a straight level. With a belly in it, it may just even sink down further and weaken the rafter. So that's the first thing is sighting your crowns. Again, on this one, the crown is this way. It's ever so slight. Make certain that each side of the pattern and the board that we're marking are smooth, that they're, one isn't above the other. The end is equal. Before I start marking, I come down to the other end. I pick up on the pattern a little bit. Set it so that's both parallel with each other. So it looks good. It looks like it's sitting on it. There's just a slight crown to it, which is just fine. Take my pencil, use the pattern. And mark out, so this is the top bird's, bird's mouth, the mouth that fits on top of the, the top plate. This is the bottom bird's mouth. This line here is plumb, it's level with the ground. This is for the soffit, the soffit cut. And Most carpenters, people in the business, usually just drive the, the circular saw a little bit further in the bird's mouth, cutting into the rafter some, so you'll see these two little crosshairs. I'm just anal retentive, <laughs> so I don't do that. So I use the second saw.
Here's the top bird's mouth I'm going to cut out. Older batteries, they just don't hold the charge very well anymore. So that rafter's been cut. Next, I'm going to set it up there. Everything I do is one-man jobs around here, so I set up scaffolding on each side to make it easier and use ladders as well. So I create two pot pilot holes in the mark where this rafter is going to go. And I like using these five inch screws. That way I don't have to look at where it's got to be. I just can feel it. So I want to make sure that the bird's mouth, that section that we cut in the base of the rafter, fits right up tight to that top plate and the area where the siding is going to get mounted. So I get a really nice tight fit. I got it on mark, so it's much easier for me to go underneath and uh, place my screws from below. By using these five inch, uh, I'd say pretty heavy duty wood screws from Screw Solutions, it really uh, sucks 
that rafter down really tight to the rafter. Then I'll put my spacers in between later on and use the nail gun to nail it. But I really like the, uh, the reinforcement, less splitting of the rafters doing it this way. It takes more time, but it's worth it for me in the long run. This happens to be where two top plates uh, come together, it splits the, uh, the rafter right in half, so I'll put a screw from each side going up into it. 